It's a phone, but it's also a really nice camera. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com. This is the Nokia Lumia 1020, and it's part two of PhoneDog's full video review. Can this thing compete with its gigantic, awesome camera with the HTC One, the Galaxy S4, the Apple iPhone 5, all those other high-end contenders in the marketplace? We'll find out in part two of the video review. As we roll into part two of the Nokia Lumia 1020 full video review, I wanna highlight something that everybody talks about as a negative to the platform when it comes to Windows Phone 8, and that is app support. You either have one of two scenarios in most cases on Windows Phone 8, either one of three, I should say. One, you have the official application, Facebook, for example. Two, you have some sort of third-party alternative. For example, uh, Instagram, or I can't remember what they renamed it, but Instagram to Instagram, or you don't have it at all, as is in the case with some very popular applications. That said, it's something you gotta keep in mind. The application market's growing, the platform is growing, it's something Microsoft's working incredibly hard on, and I hope to see this in one or two years get up to where iOS and Android are when it comes to apps, because apps are very important as part of an overall mobile ecosystem. That said, it frustrates me from time to time when that's listed as a negative because yes, you do miss out on some of the applications, but still there are a lot of great value adds that Windows Phone 8 brings to the table. So like anything else, you're gonna have to sit down and figure out what's most important to you. Yes, you lose out on some of the official applications, but you gain in a lot of really good areas like the People Hub. You gain in the ecosystem of Microsoft with Office, for example, and with SkyDrive and this you know burgeoning ecosystem that continues to grow on the Microsoft side, very much like Google Drive is to Google and like Google Drive is to Android. You're seeing that with the Microsoft ecosystem as well, maybe not as robust, but still you're seeing it and you're seeing it grow incredibly fast. So you've got to decide what's important to you in this mobile world. It's no longer a case where you see a device and it's just noticeably better than every other device in the market. There are like 10 devices I'd carry right now in the market, and what, this being one of them, because you know what, it depends on what's most important to me at that particular time. Love that Office ecosystem. Love the integration with Microsoft products. I also enjoy how easy and clean Windows Phone 8 is. So we'll jump right into the review. Before I, before, bleh, I can't talk, before I do that, Special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like the Lumia 1020 for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. We give it to you for free on the site at instantwin.phonedog.com. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. Look at your email, your web, your pro cam setting setups. So when you walk out the door, you're good to go, which is exactly what I'm going into right now. The Nokia Pro Cam. Now, there are a couple of different camera applications here out of the box, but when you pull this phone out for the first time and you click the camera button, it's going to default to the Pro Cam application. Now, there are some weird inconsistencies with the Pro Cam application as far as I'm concerned. One, by clicking here, I can see the most recent picture that I've taken. By clicking here, I can see all of my different pictures that I've taken, which that was not my best picture, clearly. I can scroll back and forth between those. I don't know why those two buttons are there. I don't know why you need to see your recent one, but not anything else, and then the gallery is there. It's just very confusing, in my opinion. But you got your shortcuts up here. Another way to do it is by pulling the camera icon out here, and you can get all of your shortcuts. I find myself changing, on a regular basis, the zoom from auto to manual zoom. You can change around a bunch of different stuff, the white balance, the ISO. You can change around all kinds of features to make this camera and make the picture however you want it to be. So really, for a pro photographer or semi-pro photographer, this can be a great device. But again, keeping in mind, the price point is $299. So I can change around the ISO if I want to. I can change around the shutter speed if I want to. I can change around, like I said, I find myself changing this one quite often. That said, there are some confusion or confusing things. Like I said, that's one of them, but another one that I found consistent with confusion or inconsistent, I should, consistent with confusion, that's a quotable quote. You can see here 16 by nine aspect ratio. It takes two pictures, one at five megapixels, one at 34 megapixels. So you can share one with your friends via mobile and the other one will stay on the device and you can pull it off via a USB cable, but when I switch to four by three, it automatically changes to five megapixels and 38 instead of 34. So I think for a lot of people that aren't used to photography or novices when it comes to cameras, that's gonna be something where they're like, what, why do I have to change it to four by nine, or uh, excuse me, four by three to get the aspect ratio right to get 35 or 38 megapixels as opposed to 34 megapixels. And then video shortcuts are over here as well. You've got all that different options, 1080p HD video recording capabilities over here, and you've got your framing grids as well if you want those, but a lot of different options. And I think that's what people like about this. This is not a basic camera by any stretch of the imagination, but what you can do is come down here into the lenses. You can either activate Nokia Smart Cam, and then you can activate one of your other lenses that you've either downloaded from the store, Nokia Cinemagraph or Panorama being one of those, for example, or you can go back to the basic camera application if you want to. Basic Windows Phone camera application, nothing shocking here. Bring over the iPhone 5 just for test comparisons. Let's go ahead and back it out here so I can get that text. 
I don't know why it's not zooming in on that. That's odd. Let's see what we got here. There we go. And I can just take a quick picture like that using that one, or as I prefer, the Nokia ProCam application. We'll switch back to that and we'll load it up. I'll show you what you can do using the same camera, but we'll mess around with some stuff here. We'll go to manual zoom. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. And you can see the word iPhone becoming more or less clear depending on what I do. I've got my auto zoom, or I can manually zoom it in and out and say, hey, you know what? Find it to be right there. And then I can take the picture and do that. Or I can mess around with shutters. For example, shutter speed. If you have a moving car or something like that, it's kind of fun to mess around with the shutter speed. Something to play with as well. So I can mess around with all these and see real time how they change. If it's a color based difference, you can see the difference there, for example. Change all these in real time. Or if I want to, I can keep them on auto and never mess with it. But at any rate, I think the Nokia ProCam application is the best out of the box. And that's what you're going to get when you press down on the camera. Now, if you ever want to change that, you can go into settings and go and change the default open it up to be Microsoft's camera application, for example, or whatever the case may be that you find most interesting. All I have to do is go to Applications and then go to Photos and Camera. And you can see, not safe, uh, my bad, not safe search. Go down here to Photos and Camera, Nokia Pro Cam. I can either change it to Smart Cam or the built-in application with Windows Phone 8. So really cool to see, you know, and Microsoft's been kind of adamant since the introduction of Windows Phone about not having heavy customizations. I mean, you don't see like you see with Android where two devices running Android 4.2 look dramatically different. But what I do like is Nokia is finally allowed to make this device their own. This is something that's distinctly different, for example, than an HTC Windows Phone device or a Samsung Windows Phone device. You've got Nokia's Pro Cam application, and rightfully so, because Nokia staked so much on Windows Phone 8. So you've got some great applications like City Lens drive maps and transit now, like I said in part one be sure to stay tuned because we're gonna put this 41 megapixel camera to the test in subsequent dogfights and specific videos that are just around the camera itself look for pictures on the website this week and more really want to spend some time with this device because obviously the focus is the camera the Windows Phone 8 aspect we've seen devices very similar to this before by way of the Lumia 920 and other devices on the market but again talking a little bit about Windows Phone 8 today and about the 41 megapixel camera. So here maps, here drive, love a turn by turn navigation solution, Windows Phone 8. Not the best in the world, I like here quite a bit. So we can go into start for example, and I can go into here, now I'm installing turn by turn voice guided navigation, go ahead and skip that. I can download my English voice, and this is doing it all for the first time out of the box. I actually reset this device not too long ago. So I can download maps now, and as soon as I download, I can look for maps. So again, still kind of a fragmented solution here. It's not necessarily coming out of the box, or I should say it's not, We'll go to North and Central America, <clears throat> United States, and I can download. And what's cool about this is I can download these for offline use. So, for example, I'm in an area where there's no wireless connectivity. I can download Texas, my state, connect to Wi-Fi when I want to, and I'll have the downloaded map of Texas that I can use wherever, even if I'm not on Wi-Fi, even if I'm out in the boonies, maybe I'm in Hill Country, wherever the case may be that I don't get service, don't have any Wi-Fi, I can take advantage of that, which I think is pretty cool. So. Overall, really pleased with the performance of this device. Talk about a couple of things here before we close out. Just messaging, see my Amber Alert there. No real differences here. Same 4.5 inch display, same Windows Phone 8 keyboard. It's easy to type on, and I like the autocorrect capabilities. Quick round Fox. Happy that it is Monday. Quick Brown Fox likes to work. Quick Brown Fox is happy it's Monday, and you can come down here in typical Windows Phone 8 fashion and attach or speak. And this is actually pretty useful. Somebody on Twitter asked me to demo this, so I'm gonna do this for you Twitter person that asked me. I can speak and say, I can speak and say whatever I want to say and it will transcribe it. Very easy to use and great because I am a strong supporter of not texting or looking at my phone while driving. Much easier to come down here and talk like this instead of text messaging while driving. like that a lot. I'm not here and talk like this. So you get the point, it doesn't mess up every now and again, but the Windows Phone capabilities continue to improve there. And then of course, Bing support out of the box with your shortcut buttons down here, back, home, and then your search button. Bing wallpaper pops up, and I can come down here and either do local scout, like you've seen before, which wouldn't load up in part one, or I can come over here if I want to, and customize my wallpaper for my lock screen, and make it a Bing wallpaper as well. So I can go down to, let's see, lock screen, Got its screen timeout set really high for the video. Then I come down here to Bing, for example, turn the phone off and back on. 
and there's my Bing wallpaper that you just saw as the wallpaper on my device, and that will change on a daily basis. So I really like this device. I think there are a couple of different concerns that I have. One, the price point is high, and I get the reason why it's high. It's a great camera. This is an incredible camera. It gives you the ability to customize it, change your ISO on the fly, change your white balance on the fly, change your zoom, your overall focus on the fly. Really like that, but again, $299 is gonna be a tough sell for a lot of people that are used to seeing devices, high-end devices at that, at the $199 price point. I think Nokia's got a killer device here. Nokia has some great devices. I love Windows Phone 8. I like a challenger in the space, and that's exactly what Windows Phone 8 is. They've got a lot of awesome things going for them. A little bit of work ahead, a little bit of, you know, a tough road ahead, if you will, but still, really enjoy Microsoft's offering here. Just wanna see this thing be successful, and I'm wondering if that carrier exclusive on AT&T combined with $299 price point is gonna help with marketing. Perhaps it will. Perhaps they'll do a good job of marketing. The planogram will be good in the retail stores, or it could be a challenge from an overall adoption standpoint. Keep it locked on phonedog.com for more on the Lumia 1020. I'm on Twitter at phonedog underscore Aaron. Facebook, facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker. Google Plus, gplus.to slash phonedog. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.